How's things grow? Nice to be here in Crow Park. Yeah, it's lovely. Anytime you get to come up here is a, is a good day, you know. So obviously weather is lovely up here with, uh, with Borgash uh, promoting the It's Anyone's Game initiative. So, you know, it's great to be here. Absolutely. A little bit different than being out there when there's yeah. 80,000 people and you're putting the ball in the back of the net and giving it loads to the yeah. crowd like you like to do. Yeah. <laughs> probably more pressure, probably more pressure today coming up doing doing up doing these few bits, but uh I know look, as I said, it's uh it's kind of an emotional place anytime you come up here, you know, it brings up a lot of good memories, you know. Mm -hmm. So um as I said it's a, it's a, it's great to come up here. There's very few people that will experience what you experience, what the intercamp players experience mm -hmm. out on the pitch and having the highs and the lows as well that you would have as a player. Can you describe when the final whistle goes in All Ireland, can you sum up what it feels like? Yeah, it's tough. We, I, funnily enough, you get asked. You know, you, you get you get asked by a lot of school kids if you meet them at games. You know, sum up what it's like to win All Ireland. It's it's tough. Like you know, it is hard to sum it up in in one line or one word. But mm -hmm. it's just immense satisfaction knowing that all the hard work you've done over the last few months is paying off, and you're out there with you know, 20, 30 lads that you slog so hard with and a lot of them are some of your best friends, some of the closest people that you're, some of the people that you're close to in, in your life, you know, so it's just immense satisfaction and also knowing that, you know, you have a couple of weeks of, of some really <laughs> fun celebrations to, yeah, to get into, you know, so it's, it's incredible. That's why you do all the hair training. Mm -hmm. When you got that three in a row, what was it like, I suppose, getting back to, to Limerick? It was insane. I was only saying there a while ago. It was like nearly three and one for the supporters because they didn't see us at all after right. 2020 and 2021. There were still a few bits and pieces going on with COVID, you know. So it was like a triple celebration for them. So it was it was crazy. But you know, um, they're incredible supporters. They've you know followed us around the around the the country for the last six or seven years. And as we saw last weekend down in Cork, they, they haven't got sick of us yet. You know, there was a massive Limerick support down there last last weekend. I'm sure there'll be a big support in Turles this Sunday. So. We're blessed to have such mm -hmm. brilliant supporters in Limerick. That's a big thing as well. So obviously you've done three in a row. Sometimes maybe the supporters can fall off the bandwagon a little mm -hmm. bit. Ah, this is the norm now. You know yeah. they're winning all Ireland's, but it's it's not the case at all. It's not. I suppose Limerick is probably a little bit different to, to other to other um, to other counties because we were starved for so so long. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the the well renowned forty five year wait between seventy three and twenty eighteen was experienced by a lot of people. You know, so. Um, no, I don't think they're. I don't think they're taking it for granted, and I don't think they're. As I said, I don't think they're getting sick of it. You know, just yet they're. I know that they're. I know obviously a lot of them. They're. They're really, really looking forward to this year because every year brings new challenges. You know, so just like us, we're looking forward to sort of. And what's the knock-on effect, say, for the young people within the clubs there as well, the grassroots level, when they see the likes of winning all Ireland? Yeah, like uh, my school teachers is my is my day to day. Um, you know, and I was. When I was growing up, Munster were probably in their in their in their prime and in yeah. their pomp, and there was a lot of Munster jerseys around. And I I used to go to a lot of rugby games myself when I was young, younger, and lots of soccer jerseys. But the dominant, I suppose, or the the, the majority of the time now, you see young kids they have they have a hurley or a football in their hand with a Limerick jersey on, you know. So that's great, and hopefully that'll reap benefits down the line too. Mm -hmm. Did you believe when you were growing up that you'd? Go on to win all Ireland. Was that the dream? That was the dream. Did I ever believe it? Did I ever think it was definitely going to happen? I'm not sure. I always, my dream was always kind of just to play with Limerick, not yeah. necessarily. Well, I suppose it was to win in all Ireland. I was here in 2007 as a as a 12 year old child, <laughs> crying my eyes out after that great Kilkenny team beat Limerick. Um, I always just wanted to play with Limerick. I wanted to play with Limerick and Crow Park, and I suppose the dream definitely was to, to win in All Ireland. Um, you know, so it's it's obviously been a great few years. It's it's surreal, really. You know, it's, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like what we've done over the last few years has actually happened. I'm sure it probably will sink in down the line, but um, I don't focus too much on it, to be honest. What's it like to balance being a teacher then full time and having the success on the pitch and then you have this elation and 80,000 people mm. and you go through Limerick with, with the Cup and the Lee McCarty and everybody is out and then you go be a teacher then a few days later and it's all yeah. calmed down again. How do you balance that? Yeah. That's just, you have to, you've no, you've no other option. But where I am in, in Desmond College in Newcastle West, we're actually, funnily enough, we're a very diverse school. There's actually, we have 20 plus nationalities in our school with kids from all over, all over Europe and all over the world. and. Um, a lot of them probably wouldn't. A lot of them wouldn't actually even know a lot about hurling. They wouldn't know anything. Two things about it, you know. So it's it's funny in one sense, but um, it's it's also great in another sense because you're exposed to you know um, similar to what we were here today for it's anyone's game. They're exposed to so many 
kids from different backgrounds, different nationalities that actually take up hurling. Yeah. You know, even explaining hurling to them and they showing them videos and getting them out in the field on a Monday. We do, we do a bit of training on a Monday evening and you'd have kids from all different sorts of backgrounds coming out to do training. I suppose it's perfect encapsulation and why we're here today, you know, for yeah. for, it's, for Borgash is anyone's game because it is, you know, and it's 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 played in all over the country in villages, towns, schools, no matter where you are, GA is kind of the... It's mm-hmm. kind of the the the, the national. It's obviously the national sport of Ireland, and it's it's as I always say, another Ireland final day out here. It's like a it's like a celebration of Irish culture, you know. So it's it's great to see. And do you enjoy teaching her? I do, I do. Yeah, um, as I said, we're probably because we have uh, because we have so kids from so many different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. It's probably slow at the start, you know, to try, to try even showing videos of what it is, what hurlies are. You know, you, some of them have never even seen a hurdle yeah. or a slit or no anything. It's not like football, like yeah. football. Yeah, it's yeah. and it's a little bit harder. It's a little bit harder, it obviously, is, you know. Yeah. But um, I suppose it's 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 cool to be to be exposed to that as well. Obviously, talking about being out here and not learning final day, having eighty-two thousand people here, you know, and um, hurling being so dominant in your life, to then be exposed to that on a different level is is, is cool, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think of life after hurling? I do and I don't. I don't. I don't think about deeply. Like mm-hmm. you know, I'm big into my golf and I'm looking forward to a day where I can play my golf freely without anyone <laughs> like giving Joe out to me. Like Joe was telling me before yeah. this, yeah. Yeah, that's what he said to me the other day. I was talking to him about. I was talking to him about. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, he was. We were doing a thing there last week, and he was talking about how he was. Uh, I was preparing for the league final. It was last Thursday, and I was we we had no training, and I was just sitting at home resting. <laughs> on Easter holidays, couldn't really do a whole lot. I wouldn't. I, I, you can't really play golf too close to the match, and yeah. he was he was heading off to the hinge after the after the meeting that we were having. You know, and he was I was kind of slagging him, or he was slagging me, saying you you'll have to retire because that's when you get to play <laughs> your golf. So. When Mark Melbourne is shining conditioning coach and John can't give out to me for playing golf, that's what I think about down the line, but no, no. <laughs> that's, that's, I don't think about it too much, no. Yeah, you have a lot of good dates to come, yeah, obviously. Hopefully. Yeah, how is things, I suppose, now at the minute, obviously, winning the league against Kilkenny, it was an 11-point win in the end, mm. a brilliant game. It looks like Limerick are in a pretty good place. We we are, and we're, we're happy with where we are. More importantly, we have everybody fit and, mm. you know, healthy, ready to you know battle for this the, the 26 this Sunday and obviously starting 15 and with the way that the championship is structured with so many games so quickly you're going to need a squad you're going to pick up niggles you're going to pick up mm-hmm. lads unfortunately that are going to get knocks to might rule them out for a long time and that's just the way it is so it's always been we're always obviously very reliant on our on our squad the lads that come off the bench on, on game day to get us over the line and also the lads that don't make the panel that are driving it on at training sessions making sure that the lads that do make the 26 are well prepared for the match so that's the way we've always been and that's the way it, that's the way it has to be for us Does it feel like it's gone to another level obviously having the likes of Keen Lynch back Peter Casey big players are back in does it feel like in training that it's the most competitive places that it's ever been? It probably is yeah like it's it's always been extremely competitive over the last number of years mm-hmm. like if you get us if you're lucky enough to get a starting jersey then you've earned it you know and you know that somebody's either on the bench or not making the 26 that has put you to the pin of your collar to get on that to starting team but obviously last year obviously we were a bit unlucky with a few of the lads getting injured yeah. um, and obviously that, that does take away from a little bit but as I said with everybody fit and healthy at the moment it's extremely competitive but that's I always think that's probably conducive to being at your best yeah and successful yeah. what do you make of John Kiley as manager how would you describe him <laughs> how would I describe him oh um, you know where you, you know where you stand with him put it that way you know he wouldn't be he wouldn't necessarily be best friends with any of the players you know there's a there's a probably a distance between himself and the players but you know that's just the way he, he runs the ship but you know that he, he does run he, the, the way he goes about his business he runs a meritocracy you know if you're putting it in training and you're showing good form you will be rewarded simple as that and everybody knows that so um, he's, he's very fair that way and if you're not performing does he call you out straight away yeah. is he yeah. very yeah. blunt like yeah. that yeah. do you like yeah. that I do like you need to know where you stand if you know where you stand and you're not doing enough he'll tell you mm. at least you know what you have to go and work on it's as simple as that rather than beating around the bush telling you that oh you're going really really well etc etc and then you don't make the 26 when he's calling out the team half an hour later that's that's not what you want you know he's mm. never been like that he'll tell you straight straight to your face what you need to hear you know and 
that's the best thing that's the best thing yeah do you feel like that sort of makes a successful team you know it sort of drives you on even further yeah of course of course because anyone that's not making the 26 he'll give them a reason why they're not making the 26 then they'll go watch the game they'll come back training with the bit between their teeth knowing what they need to work on to try to get on the 26 and lads not on the 26 trying to make 15 you know so mm-hmm. that's just that's the, way, that's the way it has always been with us and when you're winning all Ireland's three in a row how do you drive standards to, to keep wanting to get back there again? You know, you've done it, you, mm. you have your All-Irelands, but is there still the same hunger to, to want to go back and, and to win again? I suppose we'll see. We'll see this Sunday uh, where we stand. You know, the league is brilliant and I love the league, but it, you know when you get to Championship, there's a different vibe, mm. there's, a different, there's a different feel in the air. You know, Championship hurling, um, like the last day, we hurled, we hurled well. I wouldn't say we, we were brilliant, but we hurled well for maybe 50, 55 minutes and then we completely tailed off. We know that that happens this Sunday. You're going to be you know, under big pressure, you know. But just with the, I always go back to the, the competition within the panel. You know, that's, mm-hmm. what keep, that's what keeps me hungry personally, knowing that there is seven, eight other lads maybe in the half, there's maybe seven or eight lads in the half forward and looking for three spots. Yeah. You don't want to be one of the ones to miss out, and you know if you miss out, you haven't done enough in training. It's simple as. So that's what keeps me hungry, knowing that there's top class orders, seven or eight top class orders looking for three spots, and you just got to do enough. Simple as. Yeah, the last game, I think it was Will Donahue wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, Declan Hannan, mm. Kyle Hayes, like they are massive names mm. that to come back into the squad. Mm. Like strength and depth is is definitely there for Limerick. Yeah. Well, look, that's William. Uh, William was obviously suspended. Declan was injured, and Kyle was mm. had a little niggle, but. With Keane, you mentioned Keane and Peter a while ago. Like obviously we lost Keane last year, right before the All Ireland, and that's always been the way we've been. Though, like you can never losing Keane last year was a killer. But after two minutes, not to be, not to be, uh, I suppose bad towards Keane. He understands like you just got to move on, and yeah. forget about it. You know, it's just next man up, and mm. that's always the way it's been. When one, when one fellow goes down, it opens the door for somebody else, and. That's why you have a squad. Why do you have 36, 37 lads training if one fella gets injured, you're cribbing about him, you know, it's just only 26 can make, make, a, make a panel on any game day. So if you've 10 lads that are there wasting their time, then that's unfair on them, you know, so that's always the way it's been. Mm-hmm. And what was it like for Keane, I suppose, for you all to see him, I suppose, go on and, and lift the cup the last day mm. after all he's been through with his injuries? Yeah, I'd say he was delighted to get a bit of limelight, you know, they've <laughs> like been that. stealing it, they've <laughs> been stealing it for the last few years, but... Uh, look, Keane obviously had a hard year last year. He's talked about that himself. Um, I'm sure it wasn't easy for him to, to be here last, last July watching the All Ireland. Yeah. Um, you know, it's obviously a very, very difficult moment for him. But um, he was probably the, the, the most fresh person coming back at the start of this year, probably the most eager, probably the most motivated coming back this year because he kind of missed out on a year, you know. So which drives everybody on as well, you know, so it's, mm. you, have to, you have to look at it on the bright side, look at it on a positive note. And what's the, the crack and the buzz like in the camp? Is it fun? Is it enjoyable? Obviously, he's very serious too, but yeah. he is oh, yeah, enjoying you do. each other. Of course you do, you have to, you know, we, we, we know each other so well, like as I mentioned a while ago, some of your best friends, the people that you're closest to are, are there and you see them four or five nights a week and like any group of friends, you're, you know, mm-hmm. having the crack and slagging each other, so on and so forth, and you have to, if you don't enjoy it, if you don't enjoy something like that, you know, if it's a, if it's a if it's a chore to go training, you're not going to get the most out of yourself, and you know you have to just go and you know just just enjoy it as much as much you can. I know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a phrase or a well known or a slogan, whatever you want to call it. But you know when you're going looking forward to going meeting the lads, as I said, some of your your best friends having the crack with them, going out training hard and coming in afterwards having the crack again. That's, that's how you perform the best. Yeah, yeah, it makes, yeah. It, it makes it a lot easier. And when you look at the championship at the minute, you know, everybody says it's all about stopping Limerick. That's what people are talking about now. Everybody else is chasing you, that you're at a different level. How do you feel with that? I feel that we have two games within six days. And if you listen to, you know, some of the headlines that have been written in the last couple of weeks and you get, you know, sidetracked and you're a little bit couple of percent off, well, then you're under pressure and, and you just will not be successful. You know, you've seen teams in the past that have been maybe successful and maybe read a small bit too much into it and all it takes is a couple of percent to be off in a, in a Munster Championship game for the other team to, to for you not to be successful it's simple as that you know so um, going into this Sunday we won't be taking water for, for granted for sure um, we know that if we perform like we did last weekend it won't be good enough and the first two obviously we have two games back to back then you have a break and I'm not sure how long the break is and you have two games after that if you you could easily not get the results you want in the first two games and all of a sudden you have a, a two or three week break 
and you've two games left and you could have a very short summer so um, we'll be we'll be ready this Sunday for sure what can you expect from Waterford and Davy Fitz a bit of excitement around him now yeah I suppose we did, it's hard to know what to expect really but we never focus on the opposition you know too much we'll do a small bit on on Waterford uh, you know maybe either maybe tomorrow night or whatever but we are the way we've always operated over the last number of years is focus on ourselves get ourselves mm -hmm. right and the rest will take care of itself mm -hmm. and you're very much looking forward to a lot of games this year I am like it's I always love this time of year because it's kind of the opposite of what people think it's, it's it quietens down a lot now for the next few weeks because all the hard slog is done all the really hard training is done this is the fun part this is the fun <laughs> part where you just you're the train the time the, the length of training is is reduced and you have a lot more time for rest and recovery and, and making sure that you're fresh or going into games mm. and the reason why you go to we do all our training in Rakeel and the reason why you go to Rakeel in December and January in the awful awful weather is for a championship you know so we're there now and I'm looking forward to it what does your week look like as a Limerick Carter? so it depends whether I'm in school or not but obviously in school at the moment you go to school and hunted Friday but you'll do one gym session and Tuesday and Friday night you'll be in the field with a game on a Sunday mm -hmm. um but I spend it. I don't. Th I don't think too much about the. I won't think too much about the game now this week, when I'm not at training. Yeah. You know what I mean. I'll switch off completely from the game. I won't be burning too much, too much, um, too much energy think thinking about the game. Like we're as prepared as we as we pretty much can be. You know, we're training tomorrow night and Friday, and um, I'll just relax and switch off and watch a bit of Netflix at home and make sure I'm eating and sleeping as best I can. And mm -hmm. being, as I said, being as prepared as you can for Sunday without thinking too much about it. I was just speaking to Joe there just about the game as a whole at the minute and, and where it's at. Um, do you feel that there's an excitement around it as previous years? Where do you feel the game is at the minute? Well, in Limerick, there's massive excitement yeah. anyway. I can only speak about my own county. I don't be in any other county too often. So in Limerick, the, the buzz and the hype is probably at an all-time high, which yeah. one way you need, to be, you need to be careful of. But uh, yeah, definitely within Limerick anyway, people are really, really looking forward to the next number of weeks. and. Uh, Personally, I think the game's in a great place. I know there's been a small bit of conversation about the direction that it's travelling, but in every sport, it always changes, you know, over a period of time, it will always change. You watch a hurling game 10 years ago, you watch a soccer game 10 years ago, it's completely different to what it is now. That's just the way sport is, you know, mm -hmm. so it's always, teams are always adapting, looking for an edge here and there, you know, changing, throwing a curveball here and there. So, um, I think, I think, I think, the, I think I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be nervous as the yeah. direction hurling is traveling, put it that way. Like the skill level has gone mm. through the roof even from yeah. say five years ago, mm. even like the score lines you're seeing now, um, you know, there's massive score lines and people were calling for make the pitch bigger, mm. make the, the slitter heavier, yeah. all of these things. What do you think of any of that? No, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Like, you know, there people people I always say people love complaining, they love giving <laughs> yeah. out about something, you know. If it's if they're not giving out of that, they'll be giving out about something else. So um, I I just I don't really get that argument. I know you're not the one making the argument. No, I don't get the yeah. argument about <laughs> about too much scores in the game. Like if you, look you were going to looking. yeah, if you were going to a game, do you not want a really high score and entertaining game where there's people are getting plenty of scores and to get you know I, I, like if you were going to a soccer match, you don't want to go to a nil all draw. Yeah. Know? So why would you want less scores in the game? People go to watch you know a physical intense game and the goal of the game is to get the ball over the bar into the back of the net you know so that's the goal of the game so why would you not want more of that so i don't i don't agree with that that argument definitely not about trying to reduce the score yeah i often think like seeing someone put the ball over from 70 mm. yards or whatever it is is mm. a good skill to mm. be to be able to do yeah. you know and that probably wasn't always the case years yeah. ago yeah. so skill level has came up say yeah. when you watched years ago to now playing yeah. out there it's it's yeah. probably on another level it is because people are probably training you know i don't know are they training harder now but they're you know just with sports science and the way the game is going with technology even nowadays you know people yeah. are always trying to improve and it happens in every sport that's what i would say it's not it's not just a hurling thing you know you watch any sport watch a game in any sport 20 years ago watch it now it's completely different mm -hmm. and in, in 99 percent of the cases it's far the better and he's go on now and win the four in a row hopefully that's the plan you know I'd be lying if I said that wasn't the plan but it does, it's too early to be thinking about Crow Park at this moment you know as I said we've two games back to back within six days and you need to be fully focused for them to give yourself the platform for the rest of the Monday Championship to, to give yourself a chance to get here you know so we won't be talking about we won't be talking about anything we won't be talking about Munster Finals not to mind All Ireland mm -hmm. Finals we'll be talking about all the focuses on 
Uh, and as I said, it is a cliche, but the focus is on Waterford and that's it. And you, yeah, you'd be looking to Waterford, nice weather, championship. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> no, we were training last Tuesday night, it was freezing cold, and then I got some bird to train yesterday, so. <laughs> you never know. You never know, you never no. know in April, but um, I'm sure there'll be a massive crowd at anyway, and I'm sure the atmosphere will be brilliant. And as I said, I'm looking forward to the hard slog is over, and it's time now for, for the proper hurling to start. Yeah. Brilliant, bro, thanks yeah. so much.